Hi, Constable Brian. What you doing? I'm just checking on our civil defence kit, Bobby, making sure it's all in order. Surfing defence? No, civil defence. It's looking oh. after yourself and your community, making sure you're prepared for an emergency or a disaster. Oh, yeah, like the time we went down to the Coromandels and I got car sick and I threw up all over the back seat. No, 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 not that type of disaster, like a natural disaster, like a hurricane or an earthquake, a volcanic eruption, something like that. Well, we don't have to worry about those sort of things, Constable Brian. Those sort of things only happen on the movies or overseas. Is that what you think, Bobby? Hang on, look. Thousands of years ago, there was an explosion in Lake Taupo that was so big, it darkened the sky in Rome. Do you know where Rome is? Yup. You do? Well, let's have a look on the globe here, shall we? There's Rome, Bobby. And there we are, on the other side of the world there. God, blimey. Hundreds of years ago, Mount Tarawera erupted, and 70 years ago, Napier was almost destroyed by an earthquake. Far out! I had no idea this country was so dangerous. I'm going to go and put together a trivial offence pack as well. Bobby, that's civil defence. New Zealand's a very, very safe place to live, but it always pays to be prepared for an emergency or a disaster that may strike. It was pretty tough, Constable Brian, but I was ruthless. I left out everything I didn't need and finally got my pack together. I've got the most important item, my dog biscuit, and then there's my DVD collection, uh, DVD player, TV, uh, chew toys, my wabbit and blanky. Well, they're not really essential items though, are they, mate? I mean, they're important to you, but they're not essential items. I mean, how's your chew toy going to help you when there's a flood on? Um, a flotation device. I could use it like my pedal board to help me swim to safety. Well, you know, sometimes the power goes out during emergencies. I mean, how are you going to watch your DVDs? Well, you can... Did you... OK, you got me there. It's a good start though, Bob. How about if I run you through the correct civil defence kit? Good idea. Brian down, Bobby. So, Bobby, this is what the Ministry of Civil Defence says every household should have to be prepared for an emergency or a disaster. Oh. You know, something like a earthquake, hurricane or a tsunami. Oh, bless you. Pardon? You just sneezed. <sighs> a tsunami, it means giant wave. The T is silent, Bobby. Oh, I get it. Kind of like your head is covered in silent hair. None at all. <laughs> Right. Anyway, the first thing you need is canned non-perishable food. Because it's in a can, it's nice and sealed, so it's not going to go off. And you'll need a can opener then. Spot on, Bob. The other thing that we're going to need is a torch. And it's always important that you have batteries for the torch in case the power fails as well. Oh, yeah. Thirdly, and probably most importantly, is fresh water. Because there's a real good chance that the tap water may become polluted. So it's important that you have up to three litres of water per person per day. What's the bucket and toilet paper for? Because sometimes the toilets don't work in a disaster, Bobby. Ooh! Then you've got a gas barbecue with additional fuel and cooking utensils as well is always very, very important. Oh yeah, and there's a radio, just in case we get bored with the disaster and want to listen to some groovy music. No, Bobby, it's for important announcements and it also pays to make sure that you've got spare batteries for the radio as well, just in case for the power again. Where did you learn all this from? In the back of the yellow pages, Bob, here. It's all in the very back of the yellow pages there. They've also got the information on their website. The address is in the book. Or you can visit our website, www.brianandbobby.co.nz. So with all of this stuff, we should be ready for an earthquake, an, an eruption, a storm, a flood, anything. Spot on, mate. We're ready for anything. Bring it on. Oh, earthquakes. Big floods, oh, tsunami, the big wave, oh, what, oh my, oh. Bobby, I guess I should have explained it a little bit better. There's no point in staying awake at night worrying about disasters. You can't stop them. The best you can do is be prepared for them. But, what if we don't know? Oh, what if a disaster happens and no one tells us? Some disasters do happen at night, Bobby, when you're asleep. But if that does happen, you might be woken by a police officer, a warden, or maybe even a siren. Like a police siren? No, this is what a police siren sounds like. <coughs> and this is an emergency siren. <coughs> oh. Well, that'll be hard to miss. But there must be something else we can do. 
Like, in those disaster movies, someone always saves the day just in the nick of time. That's just the movies, though, Bob. Would it help if we went through the proper precautions for each disaster step by step so you knew what to do? Yes, please. Right then, Bob. So what's the first thing you should do in a disaster? In a disaster? You should... Panic! Panic! No, Bob, Panic! Bob. That's, Help me! That's the worst thing you can do in a disaster, Bob. The best thing you can do is stay calm. But I do it so well. I know, but calm and brave. I know you can be a brave puppy dog if you really try, Bob. Hmm. I guess so. Anyway, what's first? Earthquake. It says to stay indoors and get undercover. So I'll need my blankie. Uh, something a little stronger, I think, Bobby. Here's what you should do in an earthquake. Find something solid to hide under. A door frame is good, or a large, dirty table. And always stay away from windows and glass in general. Oi, Bobby, what are you doing? Move away from the glass! That's dangerous goods. Bob, Bob. That's only in an earthquake where it might get broken. Oh, OK. Earthquakes don't sound very nice at all. None of these things are, Bob. That's why we've got to be ready for them. In a huge storm, stay indoors and close your curtains. Take shelter away from windows, which might be blown out or hit by stuff being blown around by the storm, and spread lots of broken glass around. If you have advance warning of the storm, you might want to put tape on your windows to help strengthen them. Bobby, what are you doing? <laughs> it's really tempting to leave him like this, but I don't think I can. Oh. <laughs> I'm getting the tape ready for the windows. Oh, Bobby, how about if we talk about floods instead, eh? Oh, OK. Right, it's really important that you stay as high as possible and away from the water as well, because it's possible that it could be polluted. Polluted with what? Remember the bucket, Bob? Boom! <laughs> Eruptions. This is one of the least likely, but also one of the most dangerous. Stay inside and close all your windows and doors. There could be a lot of ash flying about, and you have to avoid breathing it. If you do have to go outside, breathe through a cloth and cover your head. Oi, Bobby, what are you doing? <laughs> if I'm going to use one of your shirts as a cloth, you'd better wash them first, because this one stinks. Oi, perhaps we should talk about what to do when a giant wave or a tsunami strikes instead. Um... Run? Well, actually, that's pretty much it, Bob. You've got to run to as high ground as possible and make sure that you stay away from the water. Basically, if the water can't reach you, it can't hurt you. So stay away from rivers and streams, which will probably flood and flow incredibly fast. Oh, that seems a lot to remember, Constable Brian. is isn't really, Bobby. You've just got to remember that number one rule. What's that? Uh, don't swim in shark-infested waters? No, Bobby. Don't talk with your mouth full? No, Bobby. Oh, yeah. Don't panic and stay calm. Good on you. You know, the most important thing is to have your civil defence kit at the ready. And in it, you should have things like canned food, a torch with extra batteries, fresh water, a gas barbecue with plenty of extra fuel and cooking utensils, and a radio. And don't forget your bucket and toilet paper for all the poom. And remember, all of this information can be found at the back of the yellow pages or at www.civildefence.gov.nz. I feel a lot more prepared now, Constable Brian. In fact, I've got an idea. Constable Brian, Constable Brian. I did the shopping list for this week. That's very industrious of you, Bobby. Let's have a look. Eggs, milk, bread. 50 bags of dog biscuits. Yup. What's that about? Well, we have to be prepared, right, Constable Brian? You said it yourself. If a volcano erupts under the under the supermarket or something like that, we won't be able to get any for weeks. Right. So it looks like I'm off to go and do some shopping then, doesn't it? Yup, on your bike. See you next time. See you later. Hey, Bob. Do you know what a volcano is? What, Constable Brian? It's a mountain with hiccups. Oh, stink one. For more information about this programme and some fun things to do, visit us at www.brianandbobby.co.nz. Make sure it's Brian with a Y. What you doing? I'm just making sh checking a... Sorry, guys. Not making a move. I'm just... Got it, sorry. It's the light that the camera I'm just going... Oh, you probably say the whole thing. <laughs> sorry. In your head, Brian and Bobby, brought to you in association with Blue Light Ventures and Trolley Untrust.